All right, college football right around the corner. Uh, we're getting close, and we got SEC preview coming up. Teddy, you take it away. Sure. Let's bring in Rob Vino from Rob Vino Sports to talk SEC football right here on Sports. But Rob, we're going to try it live. Yes. Welcome to the show, my friend. Glad to be here, TC. Good to talk to you. Excellent. So we've got just a few minutes. We've got to get right into it. SEC football, all the hype's going to be Alabama, Alabama, Alabama. We're not going to talk a whole lot of Alabama because, frankly, they're a team you and I don't like betting against all that much, and they're a team that we don't like finding a whole lot of value betting on all that much. But the Georgia Bulldogs, one of three teams you're going to spotlight uh, on today's show, you say Georgia all offense, no defense. We want to bet their games over the total. Yeah, I think there's three key points here, Teddy. And let's start with their offense, which is absolutely loaded. Averaged 35.4 points per game last year. Scored 40-plus six times. They returned literally everything. The biggest question mark is going to be at the running back position where sophomore DeAndre Swift takes over for that productive tandem of Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. But there's plenty of SEC insiders who believe that Swift may end up being the SEC player of the year and a potential Heisman candidate, you could expect that 35.4 to go up this year. George is capable of 50-plus multiple times this year. Add to that their defense, which it's amazing, but under Kirby Smart, they're already at the reload stage, but they lost a ton of production, especially in their back seven. I'd expect the points per game to go up a little bit. It was 16-plus last year. I'd say let's move it up to about 20 especially when you look at how many already potent and potentially improved offenses they're going to play. I think that that helps Georgia become an over team with game totals as well. Last but not least, let's look at the value here. Last season, Georgia played 15 games. The highest closing total they had was 58 and a half against Missouri. Nine of the 15 games closed between 41 and 49 and a half. They went eight and seven against over the total against those numbers and if the baseline totals are anywhere comparable this season, they're going to go at least eight and four over the total regular season. So I like Georgia as an over bet in game totals this year. Makes a whole lot of sense. Rob Vino uh, from Rob Vino Sports. And Rob, I always love having you on before the season starts. You've been a deep dive guest many times uh, on sports, but before, because you can hit the key points on so many different areas in terms of preview. Did it for MLB? Now we're doing it, obviously, with SEC football and looking forward to more uh, conference previews with Rob Vino over the course of the next week or two. Let's talk LSU because this team is rebuilding this year. Rob, have they reloaded or is LSU a bet against? You know, I'm going to use them as a bet against, Teddy. I think LSU is a fade and a real late-breaking development just a couple of days ago hurt their offensive line, a recent indefinite suspension of returning starting sophomore right guard Edward Ingram leaves that LSU line very vulnerable. They're now down to one returning starter. And can this offensive line generate any ground game to help the new pass-oriented offense under Steve Ensminger? And there's still question marks at QB. I think if you take the vulnerability of this offensive line And just look at the defensive lines that they're going to have to face. How about this list? Week one against Miami of Florida. Week one at Auburn. Week six at Florida. Week seven against Georgia. Week eight, Mississippi State. Week 10, Alabama. Those are dominant defensive lines that I think the LSU offensive line will have trouble with. And let's go to the schedule maker here, Teddy, because they did LSU no favors. LSU is going to play three teams that are off of bye weeks when LSU is not. They're going to play Louisiana Tech the week after LSU has to go to Auburn. That smells like a Louisiana Tech cover. They're going to play Mississippi State the week after LSU has to play Georgia. Mississippi State off a bye, good news for them there. They're going to play Arkansas the week after they have to play Alabama. Three very, very tough uh, setups there scheduling-wise. I think for those reasons, LSU is going to be a fade team this year. We'll talk about LSU a little bit more when it comes to play of the daytime, bringing up LSU's matchup against the Miami Hurricanes on the first weekend of the college football season. One more team to talk about here with Rob Vino from Rob Vino Sports <laughs> as we deep dive into the SEC here on Sportsbit. And that, of course, 
the Missouri Tigers, a team that came on like gangbusters down the stretch last year. Everything was awful, and then everything turned out just fine uh, for Missouri. Drew Locke back for his senior season. Missouri lined seven with heavy juice to the over, seven and a half now the prevailing number with the Missouri Tigers. What do we like with Missouri and their season win total? Yeah, and I like over seven and a half here, Teddy, for a reason that you just mentioned. They won seven games last year, even with that disastrous one and five start. They have arguably the most well-rounded offense in the SEC in terms of weaponry at every position. It's going to be tough for opposing defensive coordinators to take anything away, specifically quarterback Drew Locke, running back tandem Demarie Crockett and Larry Roundtree, who filled in so well for Crockett once he got hurt. The wide receiving core loaded with experience. They can strike short, intermediate, and vertically. You don't get that with every team. They have the best receiving tight end in the conference. Let's say it all together. Albert Okwe Boonham. And all five offensive linemen return for this team. They paved the way to 5.2 yards per carry and only allowed 13 sacks last season. Add to that that I think personally the defense is going to help here. Defensive coordinator Ryan Walters brought a new life and a new spark to the defense. Once head coach Barry Odom let go of the reins and gave Ryan Walters full reign, that spark is reportedly carried over and grown this offseason. So I'd expect Missouri's defense to be better. The health of their dominant five-star recruit tackle. They don't get many five-stars. Terry Beckner Jr. helped elevate the defensive line play midseason last year. And they now have enough experienced uh, rotational depth to be competitive once again. The back seven's tightened up quite a bit under D.C. Walters. He is the defensive backs coach. That's his specialty. They return six of seven starters back there. The seventh is a top-notch grad transfer from Oregon. I can see this team winning eight games, possibly nine. For those reasons, I'll play over seven and a half with Mizzou. Rob Vino from Rob Vino Sports. Thank you so much for joining us, giving us an SEC preview. We'll talk what? Big Ten football, perhaps as early as tomorrow. Thanks so much, Rob. Best of luck tonight and throughout the college football season. Always a pleasure, TC. Glad to be here. Like the show? Help us keep the lights on. Please make sure to comment, share, and subscribe to all the Sportsbook Review videos. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Enjoy the game.